One job of fiction is to travel to the places where reporting fails because the participants can to want to talk. As Islamic State doesn't run much of a PR effort apart from posting videos of desert executions it's almost impossible for documentary makers to get access to either the leaders of the jihadist group or those educated young European men and women who, inexplicably to most in the West, are willing to travel to Syria to face, if men, death and, if women, rape. The state, which will be on Channel 4 for four nights from Sunday, uses drama to enter this otherwise impenetrable headspace. The Syrian scenes were shot in Spain, a location that brings a shiver now that the country has become, on the eve of transmission, again a target for terrorist attacks apparently in the name of ISIS. The series is written and directed by Peter Kosminski, whose CV contains numerous preparations for this subject matter. Warriors 1999 concerned UN peacekeepers in Bosnia, while Brits 2007 dramatized young British Muslims. Perhaps most relevantly, the government inspector 2005 and the promise 2011 dealt with Western interventions respectively in Iraq and Israel-Palestine, which seeded the Middle Eastern resentments that ISIS exploits. Kosminski's recent Hillary Mantle adaptation Wolf Hall might seem an outlier in his output, but even that Tudor story involved a murderous faith-based regime. The state follows four British jihadists, Shakira Onuiara, a doctor with a young son student Ashna Shivani Cameron and friends Jalal Samoto and Ziyad Ryan McKen. In line with the ISIS handbook, the men are taught how to fight, and the women how to keep a happy bedroom and kitchen for the husband they will be allotted from among the warriors. Yet Shakira makes the case, with scriptural justification, for being allowed to practice her medical skills, in a clever move that prevents the storylines of the home front and the front line becoming completely separate. Risking violence and death, the protagonists of the state. The state frequently seems to be inverting or subverting moments from movies set in the First or Second World War. There's a repeated scene in which the wife of a soldier answers a knock to find two official representatives on the doorstep with a piece of paper that can only mean one thing. Here, though, the messengers address the widow with joy your husband has been given a great honor. He is with the virgins in paradise. To be the wife of a martyr is a great reward. In the pre-battle scenes, were unsettlingly aware that the young British men being trained for the impending offensive would, in the past, have been fighting for the allies of America against a different definition of infidels. The scripts also borrow tropes from dramas about Nazi-occupied communities. There's a constant alert for spies and deserters. One ISIS fighter has a crisis of moral conscience and helps those he is ordered to harm. A Syrian pharmacist who supports resistance to the jihadists is a version of the good German in war movies. Language is often an obstacle in dramatizing foreign cultures, but the state finds a number of intelligent solutions. Arabic is usually subtitled, but Kosminski also uses simultaneous translation by bilingual characters within scenes, an interpretation app on the iPhone of a jihadi bride and flashing up translations of single Arabic words that occur in English dialogue. The state interestingly complements two recent series shown on Channel 4. The fictional characters carry on the debate in Tom Holland's documentary ISIS The Origins of Violence about the extent to which terrorist jihad and the exploitation of women can be justified by the Quran. In a striking scene on the eve of battle, the state sees ISIS fighters struggling with the apparent article of faith that they must suffer a terrible defeat before they can gain an eventual victory. And scenes in which the jihadi brides are taken to meet husbands now entitled to rape them chime eerily with the adaptation of The Handmaid's Tale, a fictional depiction of a misogynist theocracy. But as Margaret Atwood's novel was provoked by the rise of the Christian fundamentalist right in the U.S., the proximity of the state and the handmaid's tale is a useful reminder that Islam is not the only faith that sanctifies restrictions on women. The state, would it make British citizens harder to recruit the state will inevitably be scrutinized for signs of justifying a defending ISIS, and some politicians and pundits will be appalled by the mere existence of a British drama in which every major character is a jihadist. For me, though, Kosminski performs one of the greatest obligations on a democratic society, to explore the ideology of its enemies. The state does this forensically but never sympathetically, unflinchingly depicting the depraved violence ISIS inflicts on those who oppose it, although the camera is careful where it looks and when it cuts away in scenes of behanding or beheading. The regime's crushing suppression of women and radicalizing of children, through the crucial role of Shakira's son, Isaac, luminously played by Nana Ajima Bediako, are also presented without a flicker of justification. 
The biggest risk here is to include no flashbacks or backstories that explain why these characters chose to risk their lives and liberty in Syria. The anti-jihad case is powerfully put by a major speech in the final episode, presenting a more positive view of the UK from a British Muslim, but the reasons for leaving Britain to serve the regime are less explicitly stated. This decision is morally comprehensible, but dramatically weakening. But the key question is whether a group of British teenagers, after watching the state, would be more or less likely to become jihadists. The answer, surely, is that they would be harder to recruit. Some might argue that the drama is itself part of the British establishment's consistent demonization of Islam, but Kosminski anticipates that objection. A subtle final twist makes clear that the show's title refers to more than one country. As in the fiction of John le Carre, no state is entirely benign in the means used to achieve its ideological ends. The state starts on 20 August at 9 p.m. on Channel 4.